Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. More specifically, a brand new Albums I Missed video. Today, we will be talking about a slew of albums that were released in the last few weeks in the month of December 2022 that we did not get the chance to talk about because we were focusing on the the typical end-of-the-year content that y'all love so much that y'all eat the goddamn fuck up like goddamn Christmas turkey with stuffing and mashed potatoes and such. But before we do that, I'd like to let y'all know about the Metal Meltdown's now annual very special Christmas party happening Monday, December 26th, right here on the Metal Meltdown. We're gonna drink, we're gonna party, play some video games, have fun, do some stupid shit. The party starts at approximately 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I personally cannot think of a better way to close out the holidays to celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever the hell it is you're celebrating in one spectacular go. And the best part is, all of this is for a very good cause, because all money made from this live stream, including donations, and including any other money made by the Metal Meltdown in the past month, will be donated to the Fort York Food Bank here in Toronto, Ontario. They are a great organization that provides a variety of goods and services to low-income families and homeless people. I am even willing to match any donations made to the Metal Meltdown up to $1,000 Canadian. So if y'all collectively donate, let's say $400 during the live stream, I will personally throw in another $400. So make sure you tune in, make sure you say hello, donate what you can, if anything. Let's have a great night and let's uh, celebrate Christmas and the holidays and all that nonsense together as one big happy internet metal family or yeah whatever and such okay all right now that that's out of the way let's officially kickstart this video with a pair of eps from rotting christ greek black metal icons entitled the nocturnal spells volumes one and two together uh these eps compile a slew of rare and previously unreleased cuts from across the Rotting Christ discography, some cover songs, some demos, some remixes, some b-sides. Everything we've come to know and expect from Rotting Christ remains intact on these EPs. It is kind of nice to hear them flirt with like some gothic metal and doom metal and some thrash metal on some of the covers. It's nice to hear some older songs that have been touched up and remixed and polished. I'll admit it's not my cup of tea overall, I've never been the biggest fan of Rotting Christ, but I'm sure people who are big fans of Rotting Christ would probably thoroughly enjoy this. In fact, if you happen to have a, a black metal fanatic in the friend group, in the family perhaps even, this would make a great last minute stocking stuffer. I'm a little confused as to why these two EPs are being released individually. I don't understand why this isn't just one big solid compilation record, but what the fuck ever. If you really like Rod and Christ, and if you really like black metal, check it out. You'll have fun. Next up, we have two kind of new albums from Harakiri for the Sky. This Austrian post-metal black metal crew has always been a reliable source for, well, post-metal and black metal. And now they have decided to re-record their debut and their sophomore studio album, the self-titled Harakiri for the Sky, and... A Aoki Gahara, respectively. I've no idea if I pronounced that correctly. These new re-recorded versions are functionally and fundamentally identical to the original albums, so if they didn't do a fucking thing for you, if you don't like them, this wouldn't do anything to change your mind. Personally, I like how much tighter this is, how much better polished and produced this is. Everything just feels fuller and bigger and better. There's a lot more emotion coming out. It feels more cinematic to an extent. These albums were pretty solid to begin with, but it's it's clear that going back and touching them up has breathed new life into them, and honestly, they've never sounded better. I would go as far as to say that any band looking to re-record an older album should look to Harakiri for the Sky as an example from now on, because uh, holy shit, they really kind of nailed it. Definitely check this out if you love Harakiri for the Sky, and honestly, just if you're looking for a, a decent entry point into like post-metal and black metal, because like these guys really are one of the best bands to do that kind of fusion sound, in my opinion at least. Next up, we have Permanent Radiant, a brand new EP from Crosses featuring Chino Moreno of Deftones fame. 
Uh, very heavy, very atmospheric, dreary kind of shoegaze with some metal riffs, a lot of lush ambient textures, some kind of like electronic drums, and some very trippy passages. Definitely a heavier record emotionally than it is sonically, but I can't see that being an issue. Anyone who knows Crosses knows to expect that from Crosses. Anyone who knows Chino and his output with Crosses, with Deftones, with any project really, knows to expect this by now. It's extremely well produced and manages to pack in a lot of interesting stuff within a pretty small amount of time, so yeah, I, I would say overall that I enjoyed this. Maybe it's not perfect, maybe it could be a little more focused and a little bit more bold in the songwriting department, but overall a, a, a pretty solid EP. Looking forward to seeing uh, what, if anything, Crosses does next in the near future, perhaps? Next up we have Take a Chance, a metal tribute to ABBA from Finnish symphonic power metal and pop metal band Ambirian Don. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's mega hella goofy. It's mega hella silly. There's more fucking cheese on this than a fucking goddamn cheese fountain at the fucking Golden Corral. Oh my fucking lord. Yeah, it shouldn't be especially shocking that I'm not a colossal fan of this. I mean, it's everything that I don't really like hearing in metal, you know? It's a cover album, it's a tribute album, which I just find generally lazy to begin with. It's really over the top, it's really bombastic, it's really cheesy, um, and I'm not really into that either. It, it just kind of feels like really glorified and slightly pretentious karaoke at a certain point. By no means, like, terrible or incompetent or insulting or offensive. If you love ABBA, you might get a kick out of this. If you love Imbirian Dawn, you'll definitely get a kick out of this. But this is not not for me whatsoever. I, I am... I, I respectfully will say no to this. I will pass this along. Thank you, but I'm fine. I don't need any more cheese just poured over my fucking pasta. I'm good. Thank you, though. Help yourself. Next up, we have Time Wounds from Moss Generator, an album that I didn't expect much out of, but I surprisingly got a lot out of. Very introspective, intimate, kind of like stoner rock with like some hazy guitar tones and some atmospheric passages interwoven with like classic prog rock flavor and spice. It's very nuanced. Uh, very well arranged and composed and produced. It's got a f kind of vibe and feeling to it that reminds me of the most recent Elder album, but leaning more towards like stoner rock than prog and psychedelia. I'm also to a certain extent reminded of like Baroness, like the last few records, yellow and green and purple, gold and gray, but like stripped down to something a little bit more accessible. There are a lot of di there are a lot of different movements and phases in each of these songs. Even something relatively short like "Getting Good at Revenge" has quite a few twists and turns. The closing track, especially "Until We Meet Again," which is split into four separate parts, I honestly think that's one of the best songs Moss Generator has ever written. Yeah, I, I like this album. Surprisingly really good. I'm kind of wishing I had reviewed this, to be honest, because it's it's really good. Had I done so, I think we're looking at a very enthusiastic 3.5 out of 5, maybe leaning towards a 4. Definitely check this bad boy out. It's, it's really cool. Next up, we have The Falling Tides from Australian atmospheric black gaze crew, Woods of Desolation. I think y'all might know what to expect from that genre tag, from that genre label. Very expressive, very lush, cinematic, emotionally charged, black metal with like some post-metal and kind of shoegazy elements. Definitely a very dreamy, melancholic record dealing with sorrow and depression and a lot of introspective themes and ideas. I'm reminded of Alcest. I'm also reminded a little bit of some earlier uh, records from Lantlos. There's a lot of honesty in the lyricism and in the performances and in the overall vibe and presentation, which I really appreciate. I like that it can manage uh, being like a well-produced and a really well-polished record while also having like the rawer touches of like 90s atmospheric black metal to give this a little bit more of a, a rough edge. That's, that's kind of cool. Not necessarily groundbreaking stuff for the genre, but overall very well constructed, very interesting, very effective. Definitely check this out if you're looking for something extra dreary and, and sappy and sad uh, to, to help you cope through this bright and cheery time of the year. Next up we have Carnival of Flesh from Ukrainian brutal and technical death metal crew Flesh Gore. It's fine. 
Yeah, it's fine. A lot of the same technical wankery, a lot of the same over-the-top guitar noodling, a lot of the same groovy pummeling beats and such that I'm sure you've heard hundreds if not thousands of times by now, exploring the realms of modern, brutal, and technical death metal. The production, uh, the mixing and mastering here, it's just kind of flat, it's just kind of lifeless. It's just a bland, derivative, uh, tropey, and ultimately forgettable display of modern, brutal, and technical death metal. By no means like horrible, just really, really, really unremarkable. If you're just looking for a bunch of gurgling vocals and a bunch of like blast beats and stuff, then I, I guess this will do it for you. More power to you. But I'd rather go back and listen to, you know, all the other fantastic death metal records that were released this year. Like, plain and simple. There's, there, there's just way better stuff out there. I don't see the need to settle for this. Next up, we have Hearts Unchained at War with a Passionless World, the third studio album from German black metal crew Imha Terracat. Holy shit, this thing's cool. This thing's gnarly, explosive, in your face, dark, evil as fuck. A lot of chaotic, stormy passages, a lot of ripping tremolo riffs and thunderous beats, a lot of really great melodic black metal kind of stuff going on with a lot of really cool twin guitar passages, a lot of really great subtle melodies and hooks. It almost harkens to like some more epic material from like Iron Maiden, but filtered through first wave and second wave black metal. It's mysterious and vicious and uncompromising, just a thoroughly really great display of like badass uh, modern black metal fury. Long story short, I really like this. I really like this a lot. I've never really paid much attention to these guys beforehand. This just kind of showed up in my inbox one day and I, I've really dug it. I'm gonna have to pay close attention to what Imha Terracat does in the near future because I mean, if they can expand upon and evolve what they've done here, then like, they could be on the verge of like something really fucking spectacular with uh, their next studio album. Obviously though, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. For now, great album. Had I reviewed this, solid four to five, and I did consider it for a solid moment. Definitely check this bad boy out. Next up, we have Vilbrunner from Veilburner. I assume it's also pronounced Veilburner, but they removed a bunch of letters, so I don't know for sure. It could actually literally be pronounced this. I don't know. You know what? It doesn't actually matter. What does matter is this is some really obtuse, really unorthodox, hellish kind of blackened death metal. Very chaotic, very weird, very in your face. A lot of like nihilistic themes and lyrics. Uh, a lot of like hellish kind of occultic kind of stuff. Occultic, is that even a word? I could say occultist, that makes sense. Whatever, it's, it's dark and it's strange and it's weird. That's ultimately what you need to know. And I think it's really interesting for those reasons. I, I love how it constantly just kind of throws all these weird melodies at you and then it batters you over the head with like some classic death metal brutality. And then it goes into like some really like over the top kind of black metal grandeur. And then it kind of circles back to some more really weird and puzzling and mind melting crap. I do feel like it's a little incohesive. Like I don't feel like everything fits together super well, but everything is super interesting. There's definitely, in my opinion, some work to be done with the songwriting, but it is a really cool album. And uh, I, I am curious to check out some of their other works because I've never really heard of them before, but they've been around for a few years and apparently their other albums are like even better. Like Angry Metal Guy was straight up just like, oh, this is one of their weaker records. So if this is considered to be one of the weaker records, then uh, clearly I'm gonna have to check out their other shit. And finally, let's begin wrapping things up with Prelude to Obscurity from M-Bomb. This, there's actually a, a bit of a story behind this record, so allow me to read you that story. An underground death metal demo grail finally unearthed after 25 years rotting, we present Prelude to Obscurity, hailing from Wisconsin in the shadow of the Milwaukee Metal Fest, and Bomb formed in 1995 while in high school in the era of Ablated Records, Frozen Dawn CD compilations, and Illinois Death Fest to name a few. And Bomb created truly memorable grooves of mid paced catchy, and brutal as hell Midwest death metal, also including the customary influence of Swedish death metal and even touches of dissection style harmony, setting this demo apart from any forced retro nostalgia. Great story. That's cool. Old school brutal death metal fans might be happy to finally see this unearthed and, and to finally be able to get their hands on this. 
good for them. Um, in my opinion, though, not that interesting. Like, not at all. I don't know, man. They're talking about all these memorable grooves and all these great riffs, and I'm just... I'm just not hearing it. It's it's just kind of straightforward. It's kind of cookie cutter. It's the same, like, gibberish cookie monster gutturals you've heard a bajillion times. It's the same grooves and blast beats you've heard a bajillion times. Maybe in 1995, this really was, like, a fucking game changer, you know? And, and good for him bomb, but, like... I don't know, it, it's just kind of tame and, and weak by 2022 standards. It's just brutal death metal. And I mean, if that's what you want, then you'll love this. Great, more power to you. But at this point in my life, I'm looking for a little bit more. If you're just going to do death metal, then you got to fucking amp it the fuck up. And, and Bomb didn't do that. So, yeah, I will respectfully pass on this. Thank you, but no thank you. And voila! Albums I Missed, December 2022, our final Albums I Missed video of the year. I don't feel as if there was anything else that was released that is noteworthy within the month of December 2022, but if you feel different and you want to tell me about that album or those albums, all you gotta do is leave a comment, uh, make sure you subscribe, make sure you check out these videos. Hope to see you at the Christmas party live stream December 26th. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.